Yo, what's up? I want to welcome you to the new series Q&A with TLA. This is a uh, concept from Cyrus, executive produced by myself. So uh, we're about to kick things off. I hope you enjoy. We're going to take you on a wild ride. This is raw and uncut. Yeah, we go there. Mm. Yeah. Welcome to Black Hollywood. going on this is uh episode number three of q a with tla i'm here with my brother tla how you feeling tonight brother brother i'm doing good uh game five of the uh dodgers championship match against the mets i uh, just checked the score we're up 4-1 so i'm in a good mood right about now that's good that's good that's good so they're up 4-1 and they're also up 4-1 they're up 3-2 if they win tonight they win okay. the series 4-2 and move on to the uh, World Series to face the New York Yankees. Okay, so it's, 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 it's going to be an East-West thing for real in the World Series if they get it done. Right. I just seen Spike Lee uh, posted on Instagram, go Yankees. <laughs> man, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting, man. It's going to be yeah. interesting. It's the two so, biggest franchises in baseball, man. This is what baseball needed was a yeah. matchup like this. So. Cool, cool. So, yeah, man, we are we are chopping it up about uh, the legendary Tim Burton, and um, you have a lot of stories and and lore about your experience with Tim Burton films. So, with no further ado, you know we're going to get into this right now. Um, so, first and foremost. This kind of correlates with um, our last episode because you saw Do the Right Thing opening weekend. And not only did Do the Right Thing uh, premiere on June 29th of 1989, but the first Batman movie directed by Tim Burton premiered on the same day. They went head to head at the box office, but of course, you know, you know wb and that budget and the the superhero uh crowd they were gonna line up to see batman so of course that was the top dog at the box office you were fortunate enough to see both films what was your experience um with batman your first experience with batman because i saw it opening weekend as well my uncle took me to go see that movie and i you know what i went into it blind you know what i'm saying i never i didn't see a trailer i didn't know that there was even a batman movie I thought he was taking me to because you know when you're you know they have those little them little uh those little uh those little kind of uh shows at like convention centers with all the superheroes and stuff like that playing right. the characters i thought he was taking me to something like that when he said he was taking me to see batman remember i was only three years old when this thing came out you know what i'm saying right so i'm like I went into there, so I went to the movie blind. What's your what was your experience with that? At the time, man, um, I was already going to the movies as a high schooler and stuff. So me and my buddies seen the trailers leading up to that summer all year mm -hmm. long, all the TV spots on TV. This was big, big news since Christopher Reeves Superman, right? So marketing was everywhere. So I lived in LA at one time, but in Sacramento wasn't wasn't the same. But any billboards that was available, Batman was everywhere. That's how Hollywood and LA was. Where I lived in Sacramento, not so much, but TV spots, McDonald's, uh, everything was Batman. Um, T-shirts was coming out. I remember Kid and Play was hot at the time. They had a video, they was dancing, they had ripped up jeans, and they had sewing patches of the Batman logo on their clothing in a video. Wow. So Batman was everywhere uh, we went open night me and my homeboy scott bryant right and um blew my mind you know 
I didn't really know who Tim Burton was. I only heard of him from other movies like Beetlejuice and uh, Edward, not Edward since didn't come out yet. It was Beetlejuice and um, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. I'm like, I don't know who this guy is. I just know Batman and Michael Keaton and of course the great uh, Jack Nicholson playing the Joker. I knew Billy D. Williams was in the movie playing Harvey Dent. I didn't know who Harvey Dent was at the time because I didn't read comics. Mm -hmm. But it was everything it lived up to be. Marketing was on point. This was a fantastic movie. And after the movie was over, you know, we was like, yo, that was dope. We looking at each other. We heard some ruckus in the theater. You know, people started getting down, you know, fight. So we got out of the, the theater and went into the, uh, where the concessions are at, you know, in the front. And these black dudes was picking on these white nerds, man. It, it was pretty messed up. These white dudes had nothing to do they was in a black neighborhood they wanted to come see batman of course there was tickets available in the black neighborhood if, if you wanted to see batman and these and these black thugs was messing with these white boys it was uncalled for and i remember one of the dudes was kind of fat you gotta remember in 89 everybody wanted to be a crip or a blood so i live in sacramento the crips and bloods that i seen in sacramento was fake you know they weren't la crips and bloods so these dudes trying to be hard picking on some nerds who, who rolled their bikes up to the theater. Oh yeah, you're really hard. So one dude was fat, right? <laughs> he ran at one of the nerds that jumped up. You gotta remember karate is big in the black family. He tried to drop kick homeboy. The white boy did the matrix on his ass and did like this. That fat dude went flying and landed on his back. <laughs> By that time security came, uh, personnel came. I'm like, dudes, get out of here. So me and my boy Scott escorted these white boys outside to make sure they didn't want to get, you know, beat up. Had them unchain their bikes, get their locks. Man, get out of here, get out of here, man, before you get messed up. And them black dudes have to do, man, why are you helping them white boys out? I'm like, man, pick on somebody your own size. You know, pick on somebody who's a worthy opponent. Man, you sorry, you know, want to be gangsters. But uh, yeah, a little, little, little ruckus broke out. But uh, that opened me up to the world of Tim Burton because up until that point, the only movie I seen was um, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. And that wasn't by choice really because Pee Wee Herman came out in 85, the movie. I never seen that shit. All I knew, it was a TV show. Lawrence Fishburne was on there. And you know, by that time I was a teenager. I wouldn't watch kiddie shows like that, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't get into the Power Rangers. The only thing I watched at that time was probably Voltron, but everything else was kind of like too kiddish for me. But I heard it made a lot of money at the box office. Everybody kept talking about it. like Pee Wee's bigger. Man, I ain't watching that kiddie stuff. And a year later, because you know hip hop was on the rise, uh, this rapper I never heard of before named Joski Love, basically a two-hit wonder at the time, a one-hit wonder. He had the Pee Wee Herman dance joint drop, right? I'm like, ah, uh, dun 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 dun. So I heard the song before I seen the video. And back then, you know, BET was big, Video Soul was big, Video Jukebox was big. And this song was everywhere on the radio waves and on videos. And I'm watching the video, there's clips of the movie in the video because in the video, maybe he's a high schooler. I think it was like Science Project Day. Everybody's doing a little Science Project where he brought a big old boom box and some shoes and started dancing in front of the classroom. I'm like, oh, this is this is kind of cool. But they're showing clips of this childish ass movie, you know, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. And you see him on top of the table doing like this and mm -hmm. doing this dance. I'm like, really? That, that, this movie is that popular? Mm. Hey, so we were, we're in high school. We're like, man, watching this kitty shit. Man. That Pee Wee Herman song was on the soundtrack. I don't think so. I don't mm. know. I have no idea. Mm. I just thought Josie Love just had a single and kind of like maybe just we think about it. I don't know. I don't know if Pee Wee even had a soundtrack. Now that I think about it, but he was in the video. He was in the video for movie clips. Oh, it wasn't in the video per se, but they're showing movie. They're showing clips of the movie. I'm so like, oh, the if they show clips in the movie, that might have been in the soundtrack. Then it's probably it's probably so. I didn't, I didn't yeah. you know, I didn't, I didn't know. But that last wow. song was banging. It was everywhere. So mm. we did a 
uh, a rabbit hole dive. I said, man, let's check this movie out. Everybody's talking about it. So we go to our local, local video store and he was too embarrassed to ask for it. And I was like, man, I, I'll do it. So it's 1986. I'm trying to find all the the first black stuff to talk about. Hey man, um, do you got crust groove? Oh yeah, 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 we got it. Oh, okay, okay, I was checking. Hey man, uh, do you got breaking? White dude was like, oh yeah, 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 we got breaking, it's over there. I said, okay, what about breaking two, electric boogaloo? Oh yeah, yeah, I said, okay, cool, 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 man. Now, uh, do you have uh, Pee Wee's uh, Big Adventure? Oh yeah, we have Pee Wee's Big Adventure. It's over <laughs> there on aisle nine. I'm like, mother, calm down. It Quiet, wow. like what? So, <laughs> we was embarrassed to rent this movie. We rent the movie. We walked home. We stopped by um, Little Caesars Pizzas. Got some crazy bread, some of that dipping sauce. Got some soda pop, and put this movie in the VCR and watched Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Surprisingly, we found ourselves laughing, rewinding certain parts, and I'm like, so this is where. Tim Burton came from, the guy that did Batman. So it was reversed for me. Mm. And in high school, though I was a jock, played sports, I was cool with everybody, I was really, really smart. And in my classes, people that looked like me wasn't in my classes. I had a bunch of nerds and a bunch mm. of goth looking chicks who were really smart, who were like bookworms. So in between classes, yeah, it was hip to be cool and everything. But in the classrooms, you know, I had a different crowd that I hung around. And a lot of chicks who wore glasses, who wore all black, were quiet, introverts, was always attracted to me. I was like, I don't, I don't understand this shit. Mm. Maybe they can read a brain from a distance. I don't know. But um, we had conversations, you know, in class sometime. And um, we were all talking about Batman. And one girl who had a crush on me said, have you ever seen Beetlejuice? I'm like, what, what, what the hell is a Beetlejuice? Well, Tim Burton, the director of the, of the Batman movie came out this summer. He also did Pee Wee's Big Adventure. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I heard about that. I, I want to say that I've seen it. And he, he also did a movie called Beetlejuice. I have it on video. I'm like, you do? Oh. So she was the type of girl that both of her parents worked full time, always gone, latchkey kid. She goes, look, you, you're welcome to come over and watch Beetlejuice. I'm like, I don't know, man. As, as my homeboy see me going to this nerd's house who wears all black, black lipstick. She, she looked like a witch. She looked like somebody from the movie, uh, you know, the show Charmed mm. or Craft or something. But you, know, you can tell she was cute. So when I came over, her outfit was different. I'm like, damn, she got some big ass titties. She, she was kind of fine. So she introduced me to the world of Beetlejuice. She mm. made some grilled cheese sandwiches and chopped up some meat. And uh, we had some Kool-Aid and we watched Beetlejuice and I laughed my ass. So I said, this Tim Burton character is pretty cool. Mm. So even though I seen Batman was the first theatrical experience, and then my second was Batman Returns. I didn't okay. see um, Edward Scissorhands. I just wasn't really into him. And um, mm. was it three years later when Batman Returns came out? Again, big Ooh. old marketing campaign. It was huge. Right. At the time, I was out of school. I was in college and I was working for UPS. Mm -hmm. um, I was working in the unload, right? Early mornings. And so anytime we had new hires, I would see them because they come to my department. You know, I had to train them and stuff like that. Well, man, everybody kept whispering. <laughs> So what, what, man, yo T, this is fine ass girl and unload. She got gang of body. I'm like, she's working here and she, she's probably not straight. Who knows? And I said, man, she's mm -hmm. over there. So let me go introduce myself. I said, hello, my name is TJ. Your name is, hi, uh, my name is Sherry. I'm like, damn, she was a white girl, red hair, greenish blue eyes probably five, six and a half. I'm like, wow. And she was wearing sweats and a baggy shirt and you can tell she had body, right? So I got to know her cause I was her trainer. And uh, things happened for a reason, man. I went to go start my car. This is like a day or two later and it wouldn't start. I was having car troubles. I'm like, oh man. And I worked in West Sac and I lived in Elk Grove. 
it's like a 30 minute drive. I'm like, damn. She goes, is everything okay? I'm like, no, nah, I got to uh, get to a pay phone and call my folks and um, get my car towed to a mechanic and something's going on. So oh, you need a ride home? I go, yeah, but I live like in Elk Grove. She lived in Davis. She lived 25 minutes this way. I live 30 minutes this way. So it's almost an hour out of her way. I'm like, she goes, no, it's okay. No problem. I'll, take, I'll give you a ride home. So she gives me a ride home all the way home to my parents' house. So we had a chance to talk, converse, come to find out we was both raised as Jehovah's Witness. Uh, we had the same type of background. So we got to know each other. And we got to my crib. She, I said, what time you gotta be home? She goes, I have no curfew. I can stay as long as I, I need to. So we kicked it for hours. I took her in my bedroom. We was watching videos. We was watching um, uh, episodes of old TV shows that I like. And I, I, I got some dinner and hooked it up and everything. My parents met her. My mom didn't care because Jehovah's Witness. Oh, you white girl, you cute. It's okay, as long as she, long as she loves Jehovah, it's okay if you can come. <laughs> <home. That's right. laughs> hey, son, white girl got ass. Damn, fine. And we were talking, <laughs> and getting to know each other. And she goes, "What does TJ stand for?" I said, it "Stands for Tajaya. That's my real name, but people call me TJ." And she goes, "I have a nickname too." I said, "What's your nickname?" You know, her name is Sherry. I said, "What's your nickname?" Cher. She goes, "No, my nickname is." 36, 24, 36. I'm like, what? She goes, those are my body measurements. And she goes, uh, ever since high school, I had these, I had this body and my homegirls gave me the nickname 36, 24, 36. She goes, if you want to measure, if your mom has a sewing machine with one of those little measuring things, you can measure me right now if you want. I'm like, hey, I believe you. I believe you. And later on that summer, Batman Returns came out. By that time, I got my car fixed and everything. And but after nowhere, we kind of like started dating. And um, at UPS, it's cool for hourlies to date other hourlies, but management cannot get with hourlies. So the dude that hired me the year previous was a black dude named Kevin. Cool. Well, I thought it was cool. Mm. But like I said, she was like probably the finest girl in um, all of UPS. So everybody was trying to get at her. So we kept our little hookup quiet. You know, I don't want to mix business with pleasure. We was kicking it by this time, right? So Kevin tried to get at her slightly, you know? He was trying to be smooth about it. Upper management, you know, drove the nice car and stuff. And um, again, it's against policy to date hourly if you are a management. Well, he was crossing the line to the point where it was getting on her nerve. And she did something I understand why she did it, but at the same time, it pissed me off. She goes, look, Kevin, I'm already fucking TJ, okay? And she told me, I'm like, what, well, girl, I, you probably shouldn't have said it like that. So this fool calls me into the office. Hey, man, we need to talk. I said, what's going on, Kevin? Uh, I heard that you are dating somebody here on the premises. I'm like, yeah, I'm kicking it with Sher uh, Sherry. You know, company. I said, no, I, I, black man, I'm going to stop you right there, Kunta. Uh, that's <laughs> okay. because we are our release it's okay for us to entangle you can't because your management he was like Ooh. i said man dude you coming at me about that a piece of ass and make the fuck out of here so you know that irritated me but uh we went on opening night to see batman returns and the only thing i can tell you man she nailed Michelle Pfeiffer's cat meow. I was like, do that again? She did it. The growl. The, I said, damn, girl, that is sick. Do that shit in the bedroom later, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, man, Tim Burton is, is kind of funny. I got into his movies late. I seen the first two Batmans, and I didn't see none of his movies since then until Mars Attacks in theaters. So, Edward Scissorhands, again, uh, somebody who's offbeat, goth, book reader, glasses type chick introduced me to Edward Scissorhands. I was like, oh, okay. I don't know. I'm a magnet for girls who like to read books, goth, glasses. I'm a magnet for them. And um, they introduced me to some pretty cool things as far as movies and stuff like that. So I'm getting to know the quirkiness of Tim Burton. So when Mars Attacks came out in 95, me and my homeboy Scott was there opening night. By that time, I became a big, big fan of Tim Burton. 
it wasn't just Batman getting me out of that house to go see his movies. It was his name himself, Tim Burton. Mm, mm. Now, when you saw Edward Scissorhands, what year was it? It was right before Batman Returns came out. So, Edward Scissorhands came out in 1990. I didn't mm -hmm. see it. It came, I seen it probably 91 or early 92, right before the, uh, Batman Returns came out. I heard about it, just never made it out to the theaters to see that. And so I seen it like a year after the release in theaters and um, watched it on home video with the, uh, with the young lady. And uh, it blew my mind because I like unconventional love stories. That's what tugs at my heart. And the fact that this Frankenstein type invention uh, fell in love with the girl and she ended up falling in love with him. He made the snow. They couldn't be together, but every winter she walk outside and it's, it explained how the snow comes from the sky. It was him carving these statues and she'd be like dancing in the snow. And I remember going like this going. Yeah, that was a... That's beautiful. That, That's beautiful. Yeah, that, that movie. Now I saw that movie in theaters. Okay. Um, my uncle took me and my oldest sister my older sister tanya she, she took he took both of us to the theater to, to watch edward scissorhand and i just thought it was the most you that's the most unique thing i've ever saw up until that point i never seen anything like it yeah. and when i would watch it again on home video like later when i was older i started to understand more of the nuances of the film and tim burton's style it was really solidified for me on that one. I think that is where he really had a firm grasp on where he would go in the future. Like that was the stamp of his style that we would see for decades to come. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so yeah, man, it, it's it's really because it has his own mythology, you know. He's the reason for the snow. That's that's the thing that stuck out to me the most. Yep. And I didn't realize till the end that that was her telling the whole story. Yeah. Now, now was, was that supposed to be like that? Yep. She okay. was the grandmother and she was the one that fell in love with Edward Scissorhands. And to this very day, is, 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 even as an, um, an elderly woman, she would go outside and look up into the sky. He's still there to this very day, carving up ice uh, figures and still making the snow. So to, the very, to me, like I said, I love unconventional love stories, you know, and um, that one just stuck in my mind forever. I thought it was beautiful yeah. storytelling. I like the bright colors. I like the, you know, how he kind of create his own imagery mm -hmm. when it comes to neighborhoods and the aesthetic right. of clothes and it, and these characters. You got the bullies. You got the mm -hmm. ladies across the street trying to trying to get at Edward. Man, I move is a trip. Uh, the lady that took a man. Oh, Annette Betty, I love her as an actress. And she plays such the most perfect mom to take that young man in and uh, give him a life. And he got into the bed and was <laughs> stabbing the bed. <laughs> you know, everything yeah. he did, he would cut his face up and she'll put cream on him and makeup, man. Uh, it's an enduring story. That, yeah, that, that, that's probably my favorite film of his. Yeah. Overall, you know what I'm saying? um it's it's really it's it's it, when you think about it it's like he's like a a deity you know he's like a deity that is responsible for an element yeah. a weather element that's the cool thing i like it's like its own mythology like it it recons everything that we know and it creates its own thing and i, I like stuff like that you know Definitely. so now, Edward Scissorhand, that's that's Tim Burton's own IP, correct? Yeah. See? That's <laughs> right there, man. Yep. Man, I love it, man. I love it. I love it. I love the way he thinks. Because not too many people can can picture something in their mind and then catch it on film. And that's why he's an award-winning director. Not picture of the year, but he always wins best sets, best mm -hmm. art, and best costume design. A lot of his movies over the years has won a gang of awards. He finally won, I think, Best Actor or Best Supporting Actor for Ed Wood. But um, dude is 
incredible, man. His worlds that he builds is something we've never seen until he came along, man. Even you go back to Batman, Gotham. Gotham City was his own thing, the way when Tim Burton got his hands on it and Beetlejuice. We're talking about a demon who's supposed to be the antagonist in the movie, but he's so cool. He's a title character. He's the bad guy mm -hmm. in Beetlejuice, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, Tim Burton just has a sense and sensibility about him that I've never seen. Born and raised right here in Cali. Uh, I think he's from Burbank, California. So he's a California kid, man. And um, he worked for Disney as a young age, but dude, he's one of a kind, man. Love his films. You know what, man? I'm, I'm gonna go back to Edward Scissorhands tonight, tonight, and check it out again. I haven't seen it in such a long time, man. And, uh, you know, he's a master of his craft for sure. Now, uh, you know, moving right along. Now, after Batman Returns, um, you saw in theaters Mars Attacks, right? right. Now, you skipped Edward. You went to you went back to Edward after, correct? Right. Now, how was your experience with Mars Attacks? Again, me and my homeboy Scott went opening day. We went to a matinee. Uh, by that time I was working, I got off early, went to a 10, 10 30 showing in the morning, and uh we laughed our ass off. Because I love space invader movies, right? And of course, I wasn't around them in the 50s and 60s, but it told an old school story from that from that age of aliens. I tell mm -hmm. you know, space off of another IP. Mm -hmm. And the way them aliens talk, quack, 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 quack. You had a cast that was at least 10 deep of superstars. You had Michael J. Fox, Jack Nicholson, mm -hmm. uh you had to do that that was um a james bond at the time pierce, pierce Brosnan. Brosnan. you had uh the lady from the show um the blonde girl kind of big nose but real cute oh what's her name she was in sex in the city that show okay i forgot her name i know you're talking about it had all it, i think um glenn close was in that movie i mean everybody was in mars attacks you know, you got Jack Nicholson playing a casino owner and also playing the president of the United States. He got Jack Nicholson to play two different characters. I think Danny DeVito's in that movie. Pam Greer was in that movie. Jim Brown. Movie was stacked. Uh, the girl from um, that sitcom with um, Peggy, and she was married to the obnoxious husband. Remember they had a daughter? Christina Applegate, I think her name was. Okay. She was in that movie. This movie is incredible. They had a stat cast. Now, I have never seen that film to this day. Man, it's quirky in, in, in the best way. These aliens come down. I don't want to spoil it for you, but you know how humans are. We just assume that we're in control and we know everything that's going on. And had these communicators. When the aliens finally came down, I just had this, uh, this communicator that Ch Ch uh, Pierce Brosnan built. So when the aliens talk, it will transfer the language into English. Mm -hmm. And um, they were peaceful aliens up until a certain point and a certain object set them off where they try to destroy the whole world because the movie is called Mars Attacks. And when you see it and what sets them off, <laughs> that movie had me dying. That movie is incredible, man. Mm. Tim Burton at his best. It didn't do really well at the box office, probably came in number three or two but you know anybody who's a tim burton fan will tell you that movie is genius man it got more appreciated as it got older and uh once it came out of theaters and um it was one to fancy man like i said one of the biggest casts i've ever seen in the movie dude that cast is stacked. it's like 11 deep of a-list mm -hmm. actors in that movie and for tim burton to get that many people to come together and to be in a quirky, crazy movie like this is pretty damn cool, man. Mars Attacks is a guilty pleasure for real. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Man. I got I have yet to see it. I Treat have yet yourself. to see it. Yeah, I well, you got a birthday it. coming up, right? Yep. 
Hey man, while you, wherever you at on an island in a big city, you know, make sure you rent that on um, VOD and treat yourself to some uh, Tim Burton Mars Attack. And speaking of your birthday, you know, I got you some. Okay. Oh, oh. Hey. okay. Okay. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah. that. I appreciate that. I know you're a big EPMD fan. Yes, sir. And uh, this is made from that shop right there in Compton, California. So all the way from Los Angeles. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. That's fly. So I'll be sending that to you. I love it. I love it, man. I love it. I appreciate that, man. That's fine oh, right I, there. I, I gotta take care of my boy, man. Gotta take I care of my boy. That. I appreciate that. That's that's big right there, man. That's love. That's love. So um the next joint you saw in theater, uh what what was your next joint? Uh I think it was so, 99. I think so it was Hollow. Hollow. That personally is my favorite Tim Burton fan. I mean film, excuse me. Really? That was my favorite because as a kid. In preschool and elementary, the teachers read to you these stories. One famous one, every Halloween, they would read The Three Billy Goats Gruff, where they're crossing that bridge and that troll underneath, trying to kill those those uh, the little billy goats. Mm -hmm. And the other story they would read is The Headless Horseman or Sleepy Hollow. And, you know, back then, teachers got into character. You know, they get the book and they read, they dim the light, they read by candlelight. That story always scared me to death and every year around halloween that that animated cartoon would come on tv with ichabod and um the sleepy hollow story the headless horseman mm -hmm. every halloween i will watch that that short cartoon animated show that came on tv so when i found out by this time i knew who tim burton was by this time i was doing research i knew what he was working on and when i heard he adapted and started writing his own original script for sleepy hollow i'm like yes now he's really getting into the horror element since movies it got kind of like horror elements some but now this is a full-on horror movie and it was going to be rated r i'm like tim burton's doing a rated r movie and he got his best homie johnny depp to be in this movie again and i'm like yo so opening night i never forget it, it came out the same week or a week before a week after that new james bond movie that came out and um Man, I went open and I could see that. I never seen a set so beautiful in my life. You know, the trees were twisted. You know, the trees were characters in this movie. Uh, the town, the lore, and the, the sound design, the, the slicing of their heads and the roll off and roll on the ground, and how the headless horseman would move with the sword. I'm like, man, how are they doing this? Later on, he found it with CG, they removed the head, the actor and stuff, but I love that movie. And it's nothing like the book because you didn't know that he was cursed and he was looking for his head. Whoever possessed the head controlled the headless horseman. And we got into the lore of why he was killing people and killing certain people was a trip to me. And Johnny Depp's betrayal of Ichabod was incredible he was an inventor of medicine he was a doctor his little kooky things the little glasses he had and blood was squirting to it he had wipe his face and the characters man the costume not that movie won best costume design or something or set piece but the way the trees would move and the smoke would start moving on the ground where whenever the headless horseman would appear and he didn't care i think he killed little kids in that movie mm. he did not care because he killed that boy's parents, who ended up being his little helper later on down the line. He said, look, I have nobody. My parents are dead. I have no place to go. So he made him his little apprentice to help him catch the headless horseman. And that movie is dope. The windmill, remember that? How that thing was moving? i never seen this. you never, never seen, seen it? i never seen Sleeping yeah. Hollow. Oh. Man, it's an award-winning movie, dog. You got to see Sleepy Hollow. It's... Oh. Ooh, that movie's good. Now, it's my you, favorite Tim Burton movie. You went to see this in theaters, right? Hell yeah. Now, what was the experience like? What, what... Man, by this time, I was used to the Tim Burton crowd. When you go to his movies on opening night, a lot of people are wearing black. 
uh, the female audience is a little bit bigger than the male audience when it comes to Tim Burton. That's probably why he gets all these sexy actresses all the time as his girlfriend. Something about Tim Burton, women just love. But man, the crowd knew when to cheer, they knew when to yell, they knew when to be scared. Um, the female lead in that movie, she played Wendy in those Adams Family movies, Wednesday in those Adams Family movies. Christina, Christina, Christina she Christina. was the lead actress in that movie. And you know, she was kind of, cause she's kind of in real life, kind of aloof, kind of like playing dark characters her whole life. So mm -hmm. she was perfect in this movie, but great crowd pleasing movie. Uh, there's a twist. I know you are a brother that loves twists. This twist, nobody seen coming. Nobody seen coming. No, this was this, this is a twist for that ass. Let me so tell you. So this twist was it? Uh, did it take liberties from the original intellectual property? Oh yeah, yeah. So the book, oh. everything. This is a Tim Burton joint, man. You know he likes to flip the script. So it's a it's a twist for that ass. Yeah, I think it's his best written movie by far. That was it? maybe Ed Wood, you know, but. Uh, Sleepy Hollow, every spooky season, this time of year, I throw that one on. And I love that movie. It's my favorite Tim Burton film to this very day, no doubt. Now with with that, right? Was it um was it a twist like a, was it like an M. Night Shyamalan twist? Of yeah. all those ones? It was like that. Dude, no one seen it coming. Whoa! Nobody seen it. Coming. It was like a so it pulled the rug up from up under you. Yeah, and it's justified. You know, sometimes the twist is like, eh, I don't know. This twist works, and it's justified. Hmm. Man, do yourself a favor. Check out Sleepy Hollow before you even watch Mars Attack. Mars Attack is a guilty pleasure, but if you want your mind blown. Uh, the movie is so well directed and so different. You can tell it's a Tim Burton joint, but the mystery element, I never seen Tim Burton tackle anything like that. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. he was a little bit out of his wheelhouse, but man, it was a perfect combination of Tim Burton, Tim Burton's kookiness, weirdness, spookiness, and a murder mystery that's throughout the film. And your main antagonist who's doing the, the murders is a headless horseman that wears a pumpkin for a head and likes to throw it at people. Man, it's dope. <laughs> Word. So they so they really brought this 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 intellectual property to life. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. It was a big hit in theaters. It made a lot of money. His only competition was James Bond. You know, James Bond's always big when it comes out. Mm -hmm. But it made a ton of money. It's I think even the top critics, Cicel and Ebert, people like that, they loved it. It's a great film. It's a great film. Now, for these two joints that you saw in theater, um, the, these these uh, Mars Attacks and Sleepy Hollow, these joints, when you went to go see them in theater, did you ever, did, did these, going to see these films, did they remind you of old girl that, that you went to uh, Batman Returns with? Like, did it yeah. remind you of her? She was a nerd, you know? It, it was women like her that got me out of my comfort zone. Because I was in the hood films, you know, mm -hmm. moving right. around and dancing. That was the thing in the late mm -hmm. 80s, early 90s. And these goth chicks got me out of my comfort zone and got me to see things differently. I mean, Tim Burton took a step out of bounds and decided to do a big adaption of Batman. But before that, he was already a great director. I just didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. And when I got to appreciate his films, you never forget that people introduce you to something new. Right. You never forget whenever I think about Sleepy Hollow or thing, I'm like, oh yeah, homegirl from high school introduced me to uh Beetlejuice and old girl I used to work out with at UPS because she was a movie goer like me. We used to go to the movies yeah. all the time. And her name would pop up frequently through these episodes. We went through the movies a lot when we dated. And um now, yeah. Have you are you still in contact with her? No, I'm not. Uh-uh. Damn. Now how long were you guys dating for? Because I asked, because I, I, I'm wondering how many Tim Burton's were you able to, Tim Burton films were you able to see with her? Whew. Well, the ones I didn't see, so like we would have movie nights. Even though I seen Beetlejuice once, we would rent it again 
have like a movie night, just me and her. We're rent, like Edward Scissorhands, Beetlejuice. And for a whole weekend, we would just binge Tim Burton films um, before the next one come out, you know? And um, so I'm gonna say from 92, 95, we were off and on. She was never ever my girlfriend per se. We just mm -hmm. dated. When she finally found somebody to be in a relationship, it wouldn't last long. She'd give me a call, we'll hook up. Same thing with me. Mm. So we were more friends than anything with benefits. But she okay. loved movies. We went to the movies quite frequently. And she was a G, you know, she would pay for everything when, when she treat me and I'll pay for everything when I treat her. We go out to dinner. When we went to the movies, it was an event. We go out to a restaurant to eat dinner first. Then we go to the movies for dessert. We get popcorn because even during the movie, you still want something to throw in your mouth. And um, she just was a great movie partner, man. She appreciate fine cinema. And she'll watch anything under the sun. We've seen some great movies together, but you know that experience with Batman, uh, Edward Scissorhands, and, and, and later on Mars Attacks. She was the perfect person to watch those movies with, man. And like I said, man, she can do Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman growl and meow to a T. Now, yeah. now, you didn't see Ed Wood in theaters. No. Uh -uh. So what, what? Why did you miss that? Because I would figure, because that came out in '94. Y'all didn't, y'all didn't go check out Ed Wood together. Nah, it. You know, during that time of my life, man, things was moving fast, and if it wasn't a big temple movie, right. I wasn't interested, man. And Ed Wood never really caught my attention. When I seen the trailers, I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I, I check yeah. it out later. And uh, it, it didn't. It wasn't a big box office smash, but after the awards came out and it won Best Supporting Actor, I went and checked it out. Just like uh, that that one movie, he was a barber, Demon Street. It was Sweeney Todd. Todd. Sweeney Todd. Yeah. That was, that was weird, but Tim Burton just has a way of, of capturing things. Like Ed Wood, I seen once. Uh, the Barber movie, Demon movie, I seen that once. I mean, those are Tim Burton movies that I don't ever have to watch again. Mm -hmm. uh, Big Eyes, I love that. Seen that in theaters. Um, Frank and Weenie, I seen that in theaters. I took my uh, family to see that back in the day. Um, and just recently, you know, I introduced my daughter to Beetlejuice when she was younger. So we had a daddy and daughter's night out. And opening weekend, we went seeing Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. How was and that? The man ain't lost a step. Because the year previous, he directed six out of the eight episodes of Wednesday. Mm. That was mm -hmm. on. Uh, and I'm like, oh, that was dope. I also seen that one movie with Samuel L. Jackson. Um, it was kind of like the weird version of the X Men. Um, Miss Pettigrew's House of Peculiar Children, or something like that. It was an offbeat movie. It was entertaining, but Samuel L. Jackson played the um, antagonist in that movie. That's mm. what made real memorable Samuel L. Jackson is a fool in that movie that was a great pairing of Tim Burton yeah. and Samuel I'm, Jackson I'm gonna be honest man you are putting me on brother because the only Tim Burton films I've seen are Pee Wee's Big Adventure Beetlejuice Batman Edward Scissorhands Batman Returns um Planet of the Apes oh yeah uh and brother Daddy. and uh, he also did a movie called big fish that's a great movie oh my god it's a great movie see that in theaters okay now, okay. i see that like three times in theaters i mean i love that movie that was that, Mark that yeah yeah that was dope that was dope mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah man he has a he has a catalog for sure man he has a catalog for sure for sure now big fish it stars uh edward Mc, uh what's the name edwin mcgregor he's mm -hmm. the star McGregor. okay who great movie man great storytelling again tim burns the best and big eyes is really mm -hmm. good too now that big eyes is a bio uh, uh biopic right 
Yeah, it's about the person who's the art, who's the drawer of those that that cartoon comic or pictures that were pop popular of these mm -hmm. kids that had big eyes. You can see them, you know, in people's houses and stuff. Uh, it was the background background story of that. That was a good movie. Yeah, I mean, he's got a he's decorated man. He's got a four oh, yeah. year a forty year catalog, man. It's amazing how his longevity. Because, you know, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, I haven't seen it yet, but you're saying he hasn't lost a step. And for him to keep going for this long and continue to keep sharp, man, that says a lot about his pedigree. Yeah, I was checking out the box office today. Beetlejuice been on for two months almost. It's at number four still. It's at number money. four after about two months of being out and uh, it made another $5 million. It's, almost, it's at like at 283 domestically. It's it's the third biggest movie of the year. Everybody thinks about Deadpool and Wolverine and uh, Inside Out too, but right behind both of them is the biggest movie of the year. What thirty some years later, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Mm. Saying a lot, man. Saying a yeah. lot. And it, for this to happen this far after that original, man. Now. In Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, does it take place right after the events of the original, or it takes place in real yeah. time? Yeah, the, the young girl in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, in Beetlejuice, the teenager, uh, she's a grown woman with kids now, married, mm. uh, previously was married, no longer married. So she has a teenage daughter. So it takes a place, it's almost in real time when the last movie was made, like 30 mm. years later. That's so dope. the way they set it up, 30 some years has passed and um it's, it fits right in good storytelling that's dope that's dope because i remember there was a rumor going around i don't know if it was the black community that started it i don't know but they said that tim burton didn't hire blacks to be in his movies i'm like well the type of movies he made you know i don't see no black people need to be in them now you had harvey mm -hmm. dent and batman that makes sense mm -hmm. uh miss pettigrim's house uh, Weird Children, whatever that movie's called, you had Samuel L. Jackson, who's a big time star, was the antagonist in that movie. And this recent Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice movie, there's a bunch of black people in that movie. So, mm. you know, have to conjure up stories and uh, try to paint this face, uh, fake face of um, optimism that he don't like this or she don't like that. You know, Tim Burton's movies are just weird. I don't see color in this movies. I just see original storytelling liked by all people you know mm, mm, that's deep man that's deep well man tim burton man so tim burton for the win um yeah. any any uh any additional uh tidbits you want to give about uh tb let's see when i seen big eyes i seen that by myself and when i seen uh big fish i seen that by myself but those okay. are movies that tug at the heart, both movies. Um, Edward Scissorhands, to me, is his most emotional movie. Mm -hmm. That one gets me a lot. Then second would be Big Fish. It's a tearjerker. And Big Eyes is really, really touches the heart. But, you know, over the years, when I finally started going to the theaters and supporting them, I had some great theatrical experience. My Probably my best theatrical experience, besides the two Batman movies, was uh, Planet of the Apes. Because my parents grew up watching Planet of the Apes, the show way back in the day when I was a kid. It was in syndication, so I knew about it. And people forget that was the second or third biggest movie of that year. It was a huge blockbuster. Mm. And again, once you get on YouTube, you find a different type of rhythm and feel of movie toxicity, how people talk about film. You talk to anybody on YouTube, oh, that movie's terrible. Oh, that movie sucked. That movie's not terrible. It didn't suck. It made a gang of money. I thought it was well acted. I liked the design of the apes. It was practical. It was before CG. And a lot of these YouTubers, they just can't see in the past. They think everything that exists now is better than everything. That movie was dope. And like I said, go look at the box office. It's like the third biggest movie of the year. It made a ton of movie. I mean, money that year. And uh, theatrical experience-wise, when I went opening night, you had 
the older generation, you had my generation, you had a younger generation. Tim Burton got everybody to see that movie. And people were cheering, they were clapping, having mm -hmm. a great time. I took my parents to go see Planet of the Apes because they, again, when I was a kid, they knew about it. My parents loved it. I mean, the dialogue was quirky, yeah. it was fun. You had a little bit of apes listening to music, doing the hip hop. You had some mm -hmm. playing basketball. And to act under all of that prosthetics, the dude that I fell in love with, what's the name, Tim Roth? I discovered him in Pulp Fiction, right? He played the main antagonist of the apes Dude, he got lost in that makeup. Mm. And he, the way he was walking, they went to ape school to learn how to walk. Come on, Tim Burton is a is a genius, man. He puts everything he has into his movies. And um, that was probably my best theatrical experience of his movies besides the two Batman movies. Wow. I mean, yeah. Great soundtrack, the opening theme song. Hey man, Danny Elfman, another element we should talk about. Them two are like blood brothers. When he does a movie and Danny Elfman does the score, mm -hmm. he knows how to create sounds to match the aesthetic and the look of his films. But man, when you watch the beginning of Planet of the Apes, man, just listen to the intro music. Some of the best music I've ever heard. It gets you in the tribal mood to watch a movie about humans versus apes mm -hmm. that's dope man that is that's super yeah. dope bro tim burton man now where do you rank tim burton on your list for uh greatest directors of all time man top five is tough but he's definitely top 10 for me he's mm. been in my life since i was a kid i mean his first movie came out in 1985 you know, Tim Burton's been in my life, my whole life, and I didn't know I liked him because when I was a kid, he wasn't into director's names and stuff. He went to the movies to see the movies. Mm -hmm. I heard years later, the guy that did um, Batman did Beetlejuice. I'm like, I've never even seen Beetlejuice. So Tim Burton's name was getting thrown around late after his third film, and it didn't match. So the guy that played Beetlejuice is playing Batman and the same director. People were like, man, this don't make no sense. Come on, biggest movie of the year. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's when the, that's what a great director can do. He could take a man who's 5'10", who's done nothing but comic movies and, com and, and comedic movies his whole life. I want you to be Batman. I know you're not tall enough, but we're going to pull it off. To this very day, Michael Keaton is my favorite Batman. A to a lot of people. And that's all Tim. Mm, that's all. a lot of people. And got Jack Nicholson to play the Joker. Who else could play the Joker in 89? Nobody else but Jack Nicholson. Mm. And Tim Burton was smart. He made sure the antagonists or the bad guys, the villains, were bigger than Batman. Mm -hmm. The Batman didn't talk a lot. So in the second one, you had the Penguin, you had Catwoman. I mean, come on, to this very day, that's still everybody's favorite Catwoman is Michelle uh, Pfeiffer's uh, version of Catwoman. That's still everybody's favorite Catwoman. There's been three since her. You got Holly Berry, mm -hmm. uh, the one from and, and, the and Hathaway, and, and Hathaway. Yeah, she was Catwoman, and just recently, Zoe Kravitz. Which she was dope, but come on, she had that whip, how she made her clothes, the way mm -hmm. she talked. Michelle Pfeiffer was incredible. And Danny DeVito, I never look at the penguin the same. <laughs> mm -hmm. Man, he was in that he was in that little remote control car. <laughs> yeah, man. Batman, Batman returns for sure, man. Yeah. Was dope. They, did, they, did, they did the damn thing with that one. Yeah, that was all Tim, you know, yeah. all Tim. The reception wasn't as great far as the outside crowd because, you no know, McDonald's had little toys. I guess the movie scared kids. I, man, I don't get that. You know, when Tim Burton scares kids, it's a bad thing. But when Steven Spielberg does it with Jurassic Park and Jaws and all these other scary movies he made, 
it's okay for him to scare kids. When Tim Burton does it, it's like, oh no, they go on talk shows and McDonald's mm -hmm. pull their ads from the toys. Man, stop. Tim Burton, keep doing what you're doing, man. Right. You're one of the great to ever do it. Kid from from Cali, born and raised, my type of dude, man. And um, he's a voice for those weird kids we used to tease in high school that sat in the corner drawing all the time with their head down, hair greasy, wearing black, ripped up jeans. You know, I know what goth was back then. He put goth people on the map. Mm. Some of the coolest people I met in my life wore glasses, were book nerds, were all black. They were aloof, introverts. You got them alone and got them talking about movies and stuff. Brilliant individuals, man. Like I said, mm -hmm. I had classmates that were really smart. And I, I would never change my upbringing, how I met people. And they introduced me to some really, really cool things, man. It was nice. That's dope. That's real dope, bro. Well, a lot of your great experiences in life were by way of Tim Burton. So we want to shout out to Tim Burton, the legend. And uh, with that, we say peace. You want to uh, give them your, your exiting words, my brother? Hey, thank you for watching. This has been a Cyrus and TLA joint conception concept, man. Um, this is the happiest I've been on YouTube is doing this show right here. So thank you for watching. Uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends, and more importantly, leave your comments down low. And we out.